serious punching. All right. So the way I was going to start out is showing you that this lettuce is actually from the 16th. This lettuce is from the 16th. Oh, wow. It is now the 30th. And this is the radicchio. Awesome. Beautiful. And this is the starfighter. Oh, that looks nice. It's a big leaf. <laughs> yeah. And so that's, I, I did send you the, the Starfire seeds because those are just <laughs> absolutely incredible. But that's, I mean, it's two weeks. I had, that's standard of that. Yeah. If you want, you know, I, I, I tell people if you want fresh food, if you want fresh veggies, you got a little bit of space, a little bit of time. And that's why you're in here with me <laughs> is so that we can do that together. So the first step is I wanted you to know what was coming, that that, that is coming. And if you'll look over here just a little bit, you can see that here is one that's about 28 days in. Wow. Okay, that's 28 days in. But that one only went in about, it went in on the 13th, about two weeks ago, it went in to the DWC tank. And here is one that went in two weeks before that. Oh, nice. Look at those roots. <laughs> <That's so cool. laughs> and that's why I told you that this is, I mean, this is why hydroponics is STEM coming alive in real life because it's everything. And that's just, and this is so, this is what you're going to be doing. You can hear a slight hum in the background. And this is a one that I did not put into. I left it, it did root, but I left it in. And it's not been in an aerator. It has not been in nutrient. And so it's struggling a little. It's not nearly to the level of the others. So let's get started. To get you there, you need your water. So you got your water? Got your water. We'll have a container for the water. How much water do we need? Um, you only need maybe four cups. I mean, we're just, you can do two to four cups. Because what and we're going to do, you know, just- My tap water is filtered, is that all right? Tap oh, it's not, it doesn't matter. I, okay. In fact, best water, I found that the best water for me to use was rain catch. It's rain water. And, but we don't have, we have well water and that well water is, it's, it, we have to put in acidity because it's just the alkaline level is so high. So, so what you're going to do is you got your water. Do you have your water yet, Carol? I'm gonna go put it in here. Water. Hey. All right, Melissa, you have your water? I got my water. Okay, here we go. So what you wanna do is you're gonna dip it in. When you gather whatever water you were from whatever source you wanna take, and I use the general high of hydroponics because it has its pH control and it gives you the up and the down, the stick or the base. What, what are we dipping? You're dipping this small container that's in this? Yes. So get out that small container. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> no, that's, that's why I'm asking you to tell me. Anytime you have a question, it's like, what, what is that? <laughs> I saw you uh, dip it in. I was like, my hands? No. <laughs> Hold on. I'm getting in there. Okay. And that's part of why we're doing this together so that we can. No, I, I was teasing anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what's in it? Uh, this one? This one. So you're going to take the lid off. No, I can't see which one it is. Oh, okay. That's this. This one. Okay. Yeah. Take so the lid off. The, all right. Got the lid off. And you're going to dip it in. Yep. Yeah. And then you're going to pour it out. And then all dip right. it in and pour out about half. So you have about half a container full. Okay. So you've got half the container. Right? Yeah. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to see where we're going to test using this small bottle. The small bottle. 
that says pH test indicator. Okay, so you got that. And got you're going to take and open it, and you're going to put in three drops. And then you're going to stir it, just gently stir it. And compare it, I can see, I know what mine's going to be. <laughs> We need to be between 5.8 and 6.2 to grow leafy vegetables, especially lettuce. And you can see right here that mine has too much, too much alkaline, so I'm going to have to put in more acidity. Okay, what does yours look like? Melissa, what does yours look like? Okay, so you've got, you're gonna have to put in, you're gonna, what you'll be using is the orange. Okay. Do I shake it? Mm -hmm. And what's yours look like, Carol? Do I shake it? Uh, you just gently, you can put the lid on it or you can just gently. It's pretty start. light. Yours is pretty, oh, yours is pretty good. Okay, so yours is really close. Yeah, I don't think you have to do much to yours. Okay. Good job, Carol. Yeah. <laughs> I was looking at the charts, right? Like the color is on the yeah. bottom. Yes. It's pretty close to that seven. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I would, leave, I would leave yours. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your, your dropper. Yep. Melissa, take the dropper and fill up some, some in it and then drop it in. Okay, it still has some residual. Do I get rid of that or it's okay? Yeah, yeah, you can just, you can throw that out. Yeah, you can throw that out. Well, let me keep that. Let's see. <laughs> Okay, so I got rid of the residual and then. Okay, and now you, okay, so you put in about what, 10 drops, Melissa? Put in about 10 drops. Okay. And I don't have to do anything? You don't have to do anything, Carol. Your water is great. Thank you. I'm going to come over, Carol. Still, <laughs> I also have well water. We used to just take, we used to take and put buckets underneath the edge of our roof and pour, let it fill up with rain a little bit, yeah. rinse it, and then let it fill up with rain. And it was always dead yeah. on. They love, yeah. they love rainwater, but um, we have well water too. I'm going to test and see which one is, but well water doesn't have salt or sodium, I think. So we'll see. Anyway. Okay. So. Melissa, stir it around a little bit. All right. And then test again. All right. Stir it around. Okay. And do the test again. All right. All right. Michael, could you come and tap the front of this so you can, so I'm enlarged? Tap that so that I grow big. No, so I'm bigger. No, you're still not making me big. Where'd you go? I'm right there. Okay. Hi, Sharon. Okay, it doesn't. There, that's what we need. That's what we need. Good. Yeah. Maybe. So do I add three drops, like turning it over drops, or do I put my little dropper in it? Put your little dropper in. Put the dropper in it, okay. Pull it up. All right, the first time I think I did it wrong, I, I think I just put the drops. I think I just turned it over. Whoops. It's okay. It's okay if you did that. Either way is fine. Oh, okay. And then you stir it. Oh yeah, it's, it's getting much more yellow now. Okay, so you're close to yellow. Yes. Okay, much so now you yellow. have... It's well, it's not really showing up very well, but it, it seems... Okay, good. that looks good, that looks good. So now what you have is pH balanced water. Well, or Glenna, uh -huh. this is, if I'm looking at this bottle, this is not really yellow. It's more 6.5 or closer to seven, maybe. That's fine. That's okay, because I, I didn't know this says 
six five to six point two. I didn't on the if you, if you need if you want to if you feel a little more comfortable you can put a couple drops of the pH down. Okay. You're the boss. So you, pH so, up. you can put a couple of the pH up in it. It won't hurt. If it's if you say it's fine, I'm stopping. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> and then what I, I do is it was reading over the yeah. Yeah. Then what I do, what you don't want is the extreme ends because yeah. that will, because then if you have extreme ends, then the nutrients won't, will not bind to the plants. All right. It will stop the growth. Okay. So I just take, and I make sure that I have multiple containers. I have multiple containers that have, that tell me I've got the pH balance, that this is, this is pH, you know, it's what I need to grow. Right. And I just set, I usually set it aside. I make sure my sprayer has it as well. So mm -hmm. that when I spray my, my seedlings, that is pH balance as well. I want to put, that's just what I want to use. Now we've got a pH water. Keep your kit, keep your balance kit, know where it is so that you can use it at the next point. And now we are moving on to cubes. So we've got rock will cubes. Oh so yeah. Rock will cubes. I gotta get a ball. Sorry. And then what I'm going to do, you have a mat of the rock will cubes. See the mat? And these are one inch rock will cubes. I have inadvertently ordered uh two inch sometimes four inch and they were just too big they were too big and I ended up cutting them so what you're going to do and this is this is made by spinning actual rock <laughs> it's spinning rock and treating it with heat you can uh you can use it it can be it will eventually <laughs> be broken down it is one of the most successful growing mediums I've ever used is one of the most successful. And that's why I wanted you to start with it. You can take a knife and you can cut it, but it really won't matter if it's perfectly even. So you've got your cube, okay. got your Rockwell cube. How many are we using? You'll need about 12. Okay. And that's it. And then you'll take and put those into your bowl. Is there water already in the bowl or after? Not yet. After I count them, then I put them in so I know how deep it needs to be. Let me get a knife. Or I've got scissors. I can cut them, right? You can tear it. It just sometimes they, they shred. Yeah. 12. Uh-huh. And that's why I, I like, we have larger trays, but the larger trays, I think the larger trays are more difficult to manipulate. And I have smaller space and I also just I it's easier for me to move these sometimes I move them from under the grow light to in the the sunlight during the day I want them to have real sun we've got our rockwell cubes we have approximately 12 now the last time I planted I planted I started 48 I started 48 seeds, but I wanted us to start off with 12, but you can go back after we're finished tonight, you can go back and you can, you can take and, and keep going with your other grow trays. We ready? Yep. Yep. All right. So now the pH water, and we want to pour it on top so that they, so I used to soak these overnight, but I found that you don't have to, you just want all parts of them to be wet with the balanced water. Okay, so my water tested okay, so I can just go to my tap and fill it up. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> And you said um, how high above? I forgot. It's it's oh. just where they're soaked. Yeah, it's just yeah. they're just soaking some. Okay, so not floating, but just 
Okay. No, yeah. they're just just so that they. And in fact, if you don't they have their time, it, just as long as they're completely wet. Now, what I do, I used to put them in with every single bit of the moisture, and now I do a little bit of a squeeze. Okay. A little bit of a squeeze, and I want the indented portion of the rockwool cube to be at the top. And then I'm going to take the tray. So you have a tray, you yep. have the bottom that holds the water. This will hold the cube and has a space for the roots to come down and for the water to come down. And you're going to put one cube in each space. All right. Okay, these things, uh -huh. just all of them in one. Uh, this one, so you'll take one Rockwell cube and put it into a space. Right, but what is this that came inside of this? See it? Oh, that is, oh, your, your dome? That's your dome tray that's going to go on top. So I don't need this till later. Uh, that may be what goes on top of your dome tray to make sure that you can, at different times, you can release moisture and humidity. Okay. So that will go on the top of the dome tray. So it this and this, uh -huh. and then squeeze it out with the hole at the top, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it looks like this. Squeeze it out a lot or, I mean, it's pretty wet. No, here, watch. I'm going to do one. All right. I just went squeeze for a couple seconds. I don't want it completely drenched. Okay. Fill them all up. All 12. And that hole kind of disappears, sort of. It's okay. And I have found my favorite, if the hole disappears, it's okay. Because you just, it sometimes it makes it easier to, to know where the seed is going. But I have found that you can take the an end of a, a yeah. mixer. <laughs> a, a mixer um, beater and uh, just make another hole. Some of them are there and some of them are gone, but I mean, I know them. I understand the concept. It just makes it where you know, because I, you want, we're targeting one C per Q. Okay. okay. So we have, huh. 12 Rockwell keys in their tray. Oh. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Got my cubes. <laughs> this is our nursery. This is where we're incubating our seeds. This is it. We are incubating our seeds here. So I'm done with the gloves. Done with the gloves? I'm at I showed you with the gloves and I'm sure there will be concerned people who say I didn't wear the gloves, but I, you know, I, I have not worn gloves through any of the process. And All right. I, so. Cool. <laughs> now, seeds, yay. There was one thing that I forgot to tell you and I didn't slip it into your hats that I sent you. And that was you need you need plant labels. You can use, for right now, you can use a coffee stir or something like that, but you do need to label because you will think that you know what you planted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. I, and I it's what? Need what did you plant? I don't know. And these are, I mean, you could, this would be the entire cube. So I don't use a whole one. I actually cut mine down into eights. I cut the entire thing into eights, but at the most, I use half at the most. But I, I cut mine into eights. And then when I'm doing cleanup, I don't throw these away. I save them. And that way I don't have to write it all over again. Ah, yes. All right, let me- I've taken them. them and I've split them like straight down, like- mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Vertical. Yeah. Did you you use those on in your and your outside plants? Correct? Yeah. 
and you're right. I split bed. them vertically so they're double. Okay. Now the I also put the date. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, when you start, so you need to, you need, it's a good idea to know when you started so you can monitor that. So now we have our, and if you planted, if you're doing all one seed in a tray, you can put it in for tonight. You can put it in right into one and know that whole tray is going to be this one seed, or you can label and, and then you can go back later and put in a label per cube. I've tried doing it in a row and then I will forget which. <laughs> I know, I do that. Which row, <laughs> so, so I don't do that. Yeah. I recommended pelleted cubes. Did you get pelleted, Melissa? Yes, I did. Okay, I re recommended pelleted cubes because pelleted are easier to grip, they germinate faster, and they just, for tiny seeds such as lettuce, they are, to me, they're amazing. My only caution with them is when you open them up, have a bowl or something that you put them into, some kind of container, and you just sprinkle a little bit, because I have one time I inadvertently left the cap off and um, I, it, it takes you about 45 minutes to find <laughs> 500 pelleted seeds on the floor. <laughs> oh, I, will, I will learn from that then because I don't, yes, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I probably would have though. <laughs> I, and I was very careful and I still. <laughs> yeah. okay, so. I'm going to, and I have starfighter. That's what I'm going to start with tonight. I'm going to plant basil and I'm going to plant starfighter. I'm going to plant starfighter. It is, I went to the grocery store a couple of weeks ago and they were selling starfighter leaves of starfighter lettuce in their specialty organic section. And the ones like I just showed you that were the size of your hand and they were selling them for 50 cents each is what wow. it ended up. And starfighters are just, they're, you know, they're, they're some of my favorites because they are so big. And, and uh, I, I know Carol, at one point I, I brought you a picture and said, look, it's a lettuce <laughs> as big as my hand. <laughs> yeah, so exciting. I understand. <laughs> Believe me, so, I understand. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour a few seeds and then we're going into the bowl. And then we're going to put our lid back on. And then we get our cross, cross grip, cross what grip. What is that? It's, I like these best of all, but you can use any tweezers. My oh. cross grip are just easier to use. They're Hold just, on. I have them. But you can use any tweezers and I find you think you'll be fine. I've seen people dip it into water and then dip the seed and then you lose the seed. And I just, my preference is to use craft tweezers. When we, when, when we, when we moved, I did not have my craft tweezers and I was <laughs> a tiny screwdriver and trying to get cubes out. <laughs> so one of the things these will do is it will lift up your cube. It moves things because at this point, everything that you do is fragile. You don't, it's, and it's even more fragile when you have the, the baby stem because if the baby stem is broken, that's it. You have to start over with that plant. Okay. Is that the pointy one or the blunt? It's either one, either one. So you can practice picking up a, a seed. Practice picking up a seed. Okay. Have your seed. Get in there. Yeah, those would go all over the floor. 
I will tell you that hydroponic experts are not going to share that little bit tidbit. <laughs> <don't think> <laughs> like a rite of passage. But I am a passionate, adventurous hydroponic farmer. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. So I got it. Okay. So we got to see. Put got it. And what I'm doing is I'm simply taking one seed and putting it into the hole, yeah. into the indention. So I'm taking the one seed and putting it in the indention. And if you need to tap it a little bit on the side, but you want one seed per hole. And per How far down? Just as just in it, just in the indention. Okay. So do four starfighters. Uh, it's up to you. You, I know I sent you multiple seeds. I sent you green butter. It's wonderful. Okay. Green butter. Is, oh, it's amazing. I believe I sent you red butter too. Green. Well, I have four types, so I'll do all four, I guess, right? That's great. Now, at, stop where you are if you haven't labeled it. Get oh. your label. <laughs> Now's the time. <laughs> Get your label and place. So you remember, I just made a row of starfighter. So I just stuck them in the top in a row of starfighter. I got some some green butter. So now that you oh, said that you yeah. liked it, I'm, I'm happy yeah. now. <laughs> and you know, when I opened up the lettuce. When I opened up the lettuce, I have to tell you, it it just, it smells different. It's yeah. got, it, there's something that happens in the process. Here's one of my starfighters. So pretty. Two week old starfire lettuce. That's very pretty. Oh. Meant to eat. <laughs> yeah. So go ahead and what we're going to do, I'm going to, actually, I sent basil to, uh, I'm gonna put the starfire back in its container. I'm also going to, this time I added to yours, Carol, I added some basil because I thought you might wanna see the difference in how it grows outside. I know you grow basil outside. I just thought you might like to see the difference. Yeah growing it outside and in hydroponics as well. And I sent you the aromatic. So I'm going to place those. Well, I have a question. Um, uh -huh. uh, thinking yeah. ahead, does it, I don't suppose it's uh, more advantageous to put one type next to the other, like if the basil's in the middle or should it be on the edge? It doesn't even matter. Great. Does not matter. Does not matter, not in hydroponics. Now, one thing, when we put them, when we start working with the DWC, when we start working with the deep water culture tanks, when we start doing that, it will make a difference. We want, we if, if it's going to grow tall, <laughs> but I've grown some stir fry vegetables and they're tall and sometimes they're growing outside, out away from the light. Some spread, um, bok choy, Tatsoi, those spread, so you want <laughs> wider. And the tanks that I have on, I just uh, finished the resource page for hydroforfood.com. And the newest thing that Johnny Seeds has is uh, many heads of lettuce. Oh. And it's a, oh, oh. You might not know it, but it's a mini head. And I recommended that you have the one that is, the one that I recommended has six holes because this one, this one has more holes, but look at the size of the holes. And the baskets, the net cups, the net cups for these are smaller and it made it where my plants, they outgrew the tank. Oh, wow. And I, I do use that as a nursery tank though. I do use it as a nursery tank at different times. But you can see this one has, it's nicely spaced. 
Oh yeah, I can see. Yeah. Yeah. I have another can... question. Yes. Um, the rock wall, are they called rock wall? Rock wool, just like wool. wool. Okay. It goes like, that doesn't sound right. The rock wool, the, the holes are very close to the edge. Does it matter? Because I would think they'd be in the center, but it doesn't matter. Okay, I'll put them where the hole was. Sounds good. If it, if it, if you have difficulty, yes, but it won't, it won't matter. Yeah. Okay. I'm just making sure. I didn't know if it was just kind of if it's close to the edge. Now, if it's right on the edge, then your roots that you want to make sure your plants, your seeds, roots that the roots go down. That's yeah, what you're. That's why I, I just thought it looked a little funny, but I'll put them. I'll if it's right out there, I might make another hole and move it over. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I feel so important. <laughs> oh, this is, oh well, this is it just I'm fascinated with what it, it creates. I'm just fascinated with it and I'm just thrilled that you will that you get to see the start and the finish and that we're going to go through this together. Yeah. To, to make an accomplishment together. Yeah, it's really exciting. interestingly enough, I uh heard a news article or read one recently there all this snow coming in the northern states which is a lot because it's like so cold right now it's huh? extra cold they said it's going to be layers of snow upon snow upon snow so in march april when it starts to melt it's going to flood farmer fields and we're going to have more shortages of whatever's grown up there so you know good to I know mean, you can you can extend, I mean, I've shown you, but I'll tell you what's coming as you're planting. You can grow and go as big as this. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so this is, this is a DIY. This is an expanded system. We're starting off small so you can build success, but we can keep going to an expanded system. This is a DIY, and this is for a DWC tank that's a tote. We took oh, a hole yeah. saw and dug it. And I mean, you can spend, you can, if you want, you can buy a, a kit already made for you that, you know, the, a really large one. And, but those are close to $300 for this size. So instead, what we're, if um, I recommend, there were several items that I placed on the resource page. This is a kit. And when you're through with your seeds, we'll talk about what's coming up next. Are all the seeds in? Yep. Yeah, good. Yeah. Take your dom lid and make sure that there are no that no holes are at the top because this is, you know, when there's condensation on a terrarium, mm -hmm. you know how a terrarium works and there's condensation, there's steam on the top of a, there's steam on the top of a bowl or in the top of a pot. What you're doing right now is you're going to take this, you're going to place it somewhere that is not light right now. You don't want the light right now. Okay. And you're going to get your plant heat map. You don't have to go get it now, but you're going to get your plant heat map. And you're gonna plug it in. And you're going to put your seeds, your grow tray on it. Your grow tray's on it. All right. And what you should notice by in the morning, when it's morning, you should see condensation on the top of your dome. All right. Within, I would say, take a picture. I do. <laughs> In fact, I keep cards. <laughs> so I can find myself day one. <laughs> day one, how, how are we looking? And I take a picture of it. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I turn it the next day to day two and I clock it. How are we doing? What are we doing? And I'm making sure that there is still condensation. 
I would think by the time we make it to next week's session, you will see some germination. You should see some germination. You should see something coming out of the clay, the end. They take the, the pellets are, it's when they take some um, inorganic matter such as clay and they coat it. And uh, so the seed will come out of the clay and you should be able to see it. You should be able to start seeing the germination of the seed. Great. Take a picture of it. You don't have to, I mean, just, and, and make sure that you've got, and if, if by chance you're not seeing condensation, let me know. Okay. I, the first few times I grew in grow trays, it was, I had so much success. And the next time I did use a grow, a, a plant heat map, and I misted and I overwatered it. So this is, we want to keep it moist, but not drenched. Okay. And right now we don't need to do anything. The, these plants that you see here, these plants that you see here, I didn't do anything after I put them in the tray. The only thing I did is when I saw, when I saw the leaves starting, then I put them under a grow light. And in the daytime, I put them in on a windowsill so they can have sunlight. Okay. And we'll um, talk more about that. Okay, so we good with, yeah. right. So let me show you what's coming. You ready for what's coming? Yes. <laughs> All right. Once your plants, what, what do plants need to grow? They need water, they need, they need some type of water and we're going to put nutrient in it. They need what else? Light. Light. So we're going, if, if we're growing hydroponically indoors, my plants are growing and it's not because they're in the sun. I use grow lights. Yeah. And this one is really simple. It has a hanger that it comes with. One of the things I recommended to you is that you that you get some reusable zip ties because reusable zip ties can allow you to hang your light closer to the plant. So that may be one thing that you will need. Okay. You're also going to need Now what else do plants need? Why do they say don't overwater your plants? Any idea why they say that? Don't overwater your plants. Well, you can't saturate them or they'll flood out. They'll rot. They'll rot. Plants need air. One of the reasons why you have to give your plants a break and they say don't overwater it is because the roots need air. And one of the things we're going to be giving our roots is air. So we're going to have an aerator. Okay. Now, if you get this tank, this tank system that is on my website, this tank system, I don't, right now I'm not affiliated with anybody. This is the tank system I started out with. And it's just, it was, it came with the tank, the net cups, the aerator, the tubing, because what you want is to make sure this is 24 seven, your plants are in, your plants are going to be in a nutrient with air and they're going to, for 14 to 16 hours a day, they will have sun. And then the other time they will be resting. If you were to put a camera on your plants, they're probably going to grow the most when the light is off. Oh. So, and we, we did, um, we did ours and that's one of the things we noticed is so plants need to rest. So one of the things you also want to have, if you're building your own system, you're going to need an air stone. Air stone. All these things are on hydroforfood.com and I'll send this out to you in the next newsletter, in the next newsletter broadcast. You'll need an air stone because the air stone sits at the bottom. And we'll go through all that. You will not be setting up, you will not need your deep water culture tank next week. You're not going to need it for at least two weeks. Okay. Okay, so you're, you're fine. You do, however, want to go ahead and get 
this will save your you time. <laughs> the plug <laughs> that your aerator goes into 24 seven, always on. The plug that plugs in your light only is on. And I don't know if you noticed my light went off. Did you notice the light went off? Oh, oh I didn't, now I see. <laughs> now why, it's on a timer. <laughs> when is not the timer, this is the timer <laughs> because I will forget to turn it on and off. I used to have my, now I had my first tank shelf system in my home office and I did not want the light to be impacting me. You really don't want to be staring into that light. It can be dangerous. It is, do not do that. If you're going to be working around it for a long period of time, turn them off, wear sunglasses. But I did not want it to be impacting, I have a small dog. I didn't want it to be impacting him. So what I did is I had my plant, my grow light come on at night when I wasn't in the office. Yeah. Now the aerator, I thought it would bother me. I have recommended aerators that are called silent aerators. We, when we first set up this system behind us, we have, we have uh, the enlarged system has four, up to four tubes coming off at our aerator. And it made such a loud sound that I said, I didn't care if I ever ate anything from it ever again. <laughs> we, but you don't hear it now, do you? I do know. That's because oh, it's a okay. silent one. I recommended the one that was silent. So, so look at what the, we've done. The uh, aerator runs 24 seven, but the grow light you just turned on at night for like 12 hours, basically. I did, and you can use it during the day and we will go over all of that. Okay. All of yeah. that. We will go over all of that and, and we'll do it step by step. I won't, I, this is a gradual release, <laughs> gradual release so that you have it step by step and that we're growing it together. So right now you've got your, your plant heat map stays on. If you're now the first day, sometimes I cover the first 24 hours, I cover my seeds. I, I cover the grow trays with a towel. Yeah. Uh, let them get any light so that they're in the dark for 24 how long 24 hours okay okay after that you you know you just go and check it use your markers if you want to show take a picture of it note i'm, I'm sure melissa you're going to want to show your your mm -hmm. children are going to be watching yeah <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and I, I, I'm, I'm fascinated. I'll sit near you. I'll, I'll come out at one point in the day and think, oh, it's grown more. <laughs> like when you see the very first, like you, you like a uh, joke on for raise or farmers outside. It's like you plant your seeds and you go out like the next day and you look, even though you know it's not coming up. <laughs> it's like you look anyway, like where is it? But and this you time really it. can see things. You really will be able to see. This is, now I want you to see the difference. This is a starfighter. That's and cool. this is a green butter. You see the difference in the leaves already? Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. And they... Even now, they smell different than I, I just, you know, going into a grocery store, I packaged lettuce, packaged food. It just, you know, I, oh. nothing beats knowing where it's grown, where it's harvested, and where it's distributed. Exactly. Right. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm slow, I guess. Um, cover it and then look at it. And then the first immersion of uh, a leaf you said or just when you see green coming up you put it on the heat map then no you can keep it on the heat map now oh so even though yeah it can have heat just not like yeah. right right turn the heat mat on put the over so what we're doing is we're going to take and we're going to put this in and we're going to put this in a place we're going to put our heat plant heat map where I put mine in my utility room on the counter. 
because it's under a cabinet. Nobody bothers it. I'm the only person who washes clothes and folds them. No one's going in there. <laughs> so it's no one's going to bump because you don't want this don't dome to come off. Yeah. You want the dome on because you want to keep that condensation coming down back on the, the ceilings. Okay. And for the first 24 hours, keep a towel on top of it. Okay, and after 24 hours, take the towel off or wait till you see the towel the off and just leave it. Just leave okay. them and check on them every day at the same time. We check to see the body. Send you a picture when you see the first generation. Anticipating a really poor but if you have it, send me a picture and I'll tell you what to do. <laughs> um, and you don't have, right at that moment, you don't have to put a grow light on them. So they'll be okay. Okay, it cut out for me. So did yeah. you say yeah. when you see something emerge, that's when you start the grow light? I didn't hear it. If you did happen to see, if you see three green leaves before okay. we meet next Monday, Send me, let me know. Lynnatypofood.com. Let me know. And I'll send you right away into the next step. But we won't need our deep water culture tanks for another two weeks. Okay. For at least 14 days. So I guess I better buy that now. Get ready. Go to go to <laughs> hydrofood.com and if you decide that you want to do, do it yourself, a DIY tank, look, and the DIY tank that I recommended, there was one of them here. This one is smaller, has a smaller footprint. Does this kind of look? You're cutting out. Oh no, frozen. Yeah. You're frozen. in the top. Oh, it froze for a little while, but you're back. You're back now. Yeah. All right, now so I'm what I did is I took, I took a, it's a serving tray. It's a utility tray for food service. Oh, okay. And I just had got a whole saw bit. I measured it. I placed the net cups, because you'll need net cups too. Okay. This kit comes with everything, the DIY. And if you're interested in DIY, let me know and I will send you, I'll send you the link to, that's why the, my course, my course hydroponics for food, the DIY course will tell you, that lesson will tell you exactly how to put it together. Okay, so on, on your website, you have the DIY instructions. I, 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 that's part of why we're starting this off as virtual, but I have the course, Hydroponics for Food, and everything that we're doing is in the course. So what I will do is send you that, I'll send you the link. What I'll do is sign you up. It's $47 typically, it is not, that is not yours, you're my beta testers. <laughs> <laughs> so, but all of that is in there. So it's up to you. This is, I believe this was, $35. I believe this was 35. It or was less. or less, maybe 23. And it comes with the net cups with an aerator tubing and uh, the uh, tank. And I'm sorry that the, if we buy it, it's already listed. Oh, and Rockwell. Yeah. It's already listed in what you ever already sent us. Okay. I'll, I'll just buy it. it. It's on. It's on hydro for food. Yeah. Hydro, the number four for food.com. And when you look up at the top of, of the page, it will say hydroponic for food resources. And that's the page that has all the links to it. <laughs> and all the links are, are good. I just looked into it and it's, and all of those are good. But I will send you, I'm gonna send you a follow-up. Uh, let's go ahead and get these items ready so that we're ready to go. Yeah, that's what I, yeah, I'll send that to you. Thank you. I, just, I didn't want to overwhelm you with too much. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> you know, I, I just want to be ready. So yeah, you yeah give and it once you have it, once you have it, I've been using this one for two years. Oh wow! Once, I, I, once you invest the grow light, the grow light has moved from Houston to the <laughs> Central Texas. I mean, you know, everything that we have, you clean it up. And what we're doing is something called cut and come again. So when we harvest, I'm going to, we're going to harvest and take off the biggest leaves. And then we're going to leave leaves on there and we're going to come again and get the same amount from the plants. Yeah. We do that in raised beds. Well, everybody who wants to. It's a, it's a, so, so you'll be able to, and then once, when you start the cleanup, then you just use it again. The only thing I don't reuse is I don't reuse the rock mold cubes. Yeah. Makes I don't sense. reuse. Okay. So, Bye. if okay. you have questions, Glenna at hydroforfood.com. <laughs> you have given me your time. Tell me what was the best part of our session today, or tonight. What was the best part of our session tonight? I think and it's your enthusiasm <laughs> in teaching. I really do. It's like you're pumping everybody up. Yeah. It's exciting to, um, I would say maybe just planting the seeds and knowing that we'll see some fruition easily. Yeah. Seems. Yeah. Okay, Melissa, what was yours? Yeah, and I really liked um, just the, the simple pH test because that sounded Oh, that sounded so like that was something that would turn me off before if I'd be like, oh, if the pH of the water is not right, then how do I fix that and then give up before I even start. So like just and it's very simple. So that was really nice to learn that. Thank you. <laughs> Sharon, what was the best part? This looks like something I could even do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Yes. I newsletter and thank you for joining us now you it, it's we're going to walk through it so now that you you can walk through it too and do the same thing yeah i think what stood out to me is that we we could do it together and i have been doing hydroponics sometimes by myself and i'll think nobody's watching my leaves grow <laughs> <laughs> yeah i understand yeah it's very exciting definitely if you have any questions whatsoever, let me know. I will be sending you links to the Hydroponics for Food course, and you'll be receiving your what's up for next lesson and supplies that you need. Then we will touch base at that point. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Glenna. Great. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. Bye.